prices, we're going to, you can observe this board, collaboration board. So please introduce yourself. Where, what's your name? Where are you from? Uh, where and what do you teach? I'm going to give you some minutes here. And note, I forgot to start recording. I just started recording now. Oh, thank you. I should join that near pod link too. Welcome to new people. We just got started. Um, there's the link in the chat. I will copy and paste it again, just in case you don't have it. And feel free if either put your uh, intro in the chat. Welcome, Dina. Missing your flip cons. Uh, go ahead and try to put it on Nearpod as well if you like. Interesting. So we have here a multidisciplinary team from different grades, different subjects. And good news is that the Nearpod is useful for all the subjects. Even when I use it uh, for a social, uh, for history and politics related classes, um, it, Nearpod has features to add, for example, math symbols or uh, formulas in videos. So this will be very, very useful to make your classes more dynamic and interactive. And today during this session, we're gonna be walking uh, in using the di different features that can be used in Nearpod. Have 17 participants, so I'm going to wait some more minutes to check if there are more collaborations. Thank you, Ken. Okay, I'm going to. Okay, thank you, Lisa, Andrea, Joy, Michelle, Teresa, Dana, Ken, Angela, Katie for your collaboration. Let's move on. My students, by the way, love to use the herds to share likes among them. They're like trying to gain more and more likes. So, now I'm going to ask some Questions um, are called to ask you different questions. So, as you may observe in this moment, your names appear on the activity, but I can also hide your names. That is uh, very useful when we have students afraid of being wrong in the answers or this hiding names may make them feel more comfortable. out and 
when I did the poll, I was a timer. So time is out in the poll. You can share at the end the results with our students. In this case, we're like just in, in triple, ¿cómo se dice en tercias? In tercios? No, it's just what? In thirds. Third. In thirds, it's okay. I'm muting myself. <laughs> Thank you. It's a, it's the same. a whole bunch of Spanish speakers here in the chat, so we can help. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we have just the the group, this group, divided in thirds. Okay, no answer, no, on yes. In the video that you, you can uh, find in the in the schedule, I explain step by step how to, uh, to create your own lesson, how to add content, co content from your own creation that you have stored in your computer or in your drive, uh, how to add activities as these ones, and how to check your uh, reports. So it will be interesting or um, uh, for you or if you want you can check the video after the session to learn how to create a lesson like this one that i am using have you used nearpod before or with the video did you already create your first lesson on nearpod On participants, you could do thumbs up or thumbs down if you want to say yes or no, or if someone wants to jump in. I've not used Nearpod myself. Let's see. Anyone here used Nearpod before? Eugenia says no, me neither. Sterley says yes, but students were asked to use it. Turaya says no, and Pamela says no. Lots of no's. No. Oh. Interesting. Lots of no's. Durley said her students used it as presenters. So for, for a flip classroom, this is a very useful or has been very useful for me since I can share the lessons just as this one online, or I can use the student paste format to ask them to check the content, to resolve activities, to, mm -hmm. resolve, to get some questions, and then discuss in class once that they have checked all the resources. It's better. So for those that watched the video, what else, what, what do you, would you like to know about this tool? Any questions in the chat? You want to jump in? Is everything you're using in the free version is a question from Michelle? Yeah, yeah, the, everything is uh, from the free version. And then um, Dean is asking if you'd be willing to upload your video to YouTube. Uh, that would be helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I have the video on YouTube. The, at the end, I can post the sure. link. The cool. Okay. There you go. There's a question from Dina. Comments about nice for flipping. A thank you from Dina there. Yeah. Any other questions based on those that did get a chance to watch the video pre? and consume the flipped content. This is fun that this is all the flip cons I went to. It's like we almost none of us actually flipped our content. 
And this is a cool experiment with our conference that we're flipping things. And then just like students, we realize some don't and some do watch it. I'm going to admit that I didn't watch it because I wasn't planning on being in this session today. <laughs> it might have been a bit busy. Yeah, it's, it's okay. And, and yes, like um, most students. I try to, to do this flip of inviting you to be students to have mm -hmm. uh, an experiment, their experience. And then with the video, you can like follow up all the steps to create uh, the lesson. Good point, Joy. <laughs> I'm really like the, I really like the flip format, but I didn't have time to watch all of the video before. Teachers are the worst students and procrastinate too. Yes, we are. We're some of the worst. Those of us that teach teachers often, we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, the ones I created took a uh, uh, long time. The, um, I have been using laptop for a lot of years now, and I had um, witness how they are improving and adding more features. For example, at the beginning, um, the only way of adding content or using slides or PowerPoint was uploading my files, a uh, PowerPoint files or PDF files, uh, or creating the slides directly on Nearpod. Um, but or uh, what I didn't like was that I can not, once that I submitted or uploaded the files, I was not able to edit in the design or the content. Mm -hmm. um, and in Nearpod, the design of the slides is like pretty poor. So once uh, that Nearpod connected with Google Slides and now that Google Slides has an add-on, I'm going to show you, I created um, in here in, in Google Slides this lesson. And the, in, the menu, in the menu here in add-ons, you can add Nearpod install Nearpod to create your lesson and edit your lessons here in, in Google Slides. This allowed me to have better design, uh, a better def the design for my presentations. Uh, it uh, is now easier and faster for me to create the lesson. Um, just as a comment, I created this lesson like today in the morning, I just started like at 10.30 a.m. and I finished at 10.50 a.m. So using Google Slides is pretty easy and, and or it's easier to create your, um, your lessons. And yes, you can, um, embed videos uh, in it. You can record yourself or you can uh, post the video uh, link to embed. I can show you some examples uh, later. Okay, I'm going to move on. There's good comments like they're really liking that you're showing the teacher side while they show the see the student side, which makes it nice to be able to see both sides of the equation here. It's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Um, Thanks, um, Joy. Good. Just uh, after the student's uh, side, I'm going to move to my to the teacher side to my platform to mm -hmm. show uh, some of these features. Okay, uh, one of the questions was about how engaging uh, our students and how to make our presentations, our lessons, like more interactive. Uh, I observed that some of you teach at elementary grade, for, for example. So this will be a very good feature to use with our students. That is the time to plan a feature that is useful to gamify 
your class. Three scenarios are available. You can randomize answers or use the same order if you have different groups. I'm going to use the space scenario. Here's a question from Teresa. Oh, go ahead, keep going, Monica. Well, uh, students connect in the game. Yeah, what is the question? Oops, did you see that when you embed video, does teacher control video or independent viewing? Yeah, it could ask you if you want uh, to control the video and if you are in the classroom, for example, in using the projector, um, you can, uh, video can be, could be played only in your device or you can in, in in online classes you can choose the option of play the videos on each device um, and and students can control so the teacher defines who plays the video okay ready we have 11 players ready to time. So let's start. Again, in this case, you can show a student's uh, name or hi. Question from Lisa there, can this game be played asynchronously as well as like together at the same time? I'm failing bad because I'm trying to watch like five things at once. <laughs> I'm falling behind. Thank you. And yes. of course my dad decides to talk to me at the same time. Okay. Reality okay. of Kobe. Yeah. And can the teacher speed up the time or do you have to wait to set the time? 
Yeah, teacher can set the time. If... It. And she's typing questions too. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, the participants are having fun. <laughs> I think I did too, Lisa. <laughs> hey, I got that one right. Wow. Yay, Michelle. Yay. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> So, um, one of the advantages of using, or and one of the reasons that I prefer, like, to use the the students' platform first uh, in in this case in this session, is because in the in in this way we can experiment what the students can feel by using or playing a uh, near put because creating this uh, the time to climb activity is just as created uh, creating a quiz so the um, the features a uh, platform this um, uh, let us to feel this uh, sensation of uh, gaming and, and, and right to, to raise the can right similar so, to kahoot which is what dean is saying so is there ways to disable like getting more points by having faster answers because i find that my students start like in such a hurry to answer they don't necessarily think about their answer and um, then turning off the sound would be cool too i like firefox because i can turn off the sound from that tab so i didn't have to get distracted yeah yeah um uh, let's try to create a, a, a new one, new one at this moment i really not sure about if we can like set up how to add points and and the sound, but we can discover it. We can try at, uh, together. Yes, and I here in your devices you can like open this link and and it will let you like to save this bookmark to mm -hmm. follow near pods guide for each cases creating a, a, a lesson adding a, like the, the different programs available programs but all these features that i was say uh, using in these uh, presentations are from the free version so lots of the of the features are like pretty useful to use with your students in them um, synchronically and asynchronically. I'm going to open my the teacher's platform. Okay. First, I'm sorry. First, I'm going to finish this presentation to show you. Uh, this was a Nearpod student uh, version for this uh, workshop. Uh, here is my email and my Twitter account. Please uh, feel free to reach me. If at creating your own lesson, you have details, you have doubts, you want uh, more ideas or uh, I don't know if you want like collaboration uh, here you have my email and my Twitter account okay and now there was a question there um does it have student reports yeah I'm going to show you. I'm going to end this session to show you the student report. Okay. 
Student reports are also available in the free version. Um, I want to like comment that I'm free of, uh, of near, but I, I, I'm talking like by experience. For some time, and the, some years ago, I started using the free version and I gave some workshops at my school and so on. And once at the university, uh, when I work in, um, had some available license, uh, they like, gave me one to me. That's why I, nowadays I have this university user. Um, but my answers and, and my lessons and, and, and everything that I am like answering is, is basically from experience. So the reports are available on the pre version. Let's check how it looks. Here, this is the, we have the lesson that you just, I can, we can check here a summary with the students participation, participation those locked students, the features that they use, the level of participation. So I also use Nearpod for um, with access uh, uh, purposes. I consider sometimes the, the quiz answers or the collaboration in their grades. So we can check the responses with the names, the board of collaboration, and all the results to be aware of my students' doubts, my students' uh, misconceptions, to recognize what are the topics that I must retake or review with them to cover these uh, misconceptions. So yes, the reports are pretty, pretty useful. In This is the this is the teacher's version. He would say is how it looks like. Here you can observe all my previous presentations. Uh, so in, in the video, I'm going to, uh, before ending this uh, session, I'm going to share my, the YouTube's link in the chat. Um, in, in that video, I explain you step by step how to create your own lesson using Nearpod or using Google Slides. Uh, about the video that was uh, uh, one of the doubts is like just like this. We click on at the slide. In the content, we have the option of adding a BBC video, adding a slide with a video embedded on it, or mm. for a YouTube video. Not all are like, it depends on the privacy, if we can uh, use uh, embed, embed that directly the YouTube's video, but if no, you can use the, the slide or the web content address uh, to add the your uh, your video here in the slide and in content we have also 
the option of adding a video that we have will have in our computer or in YouTube. So there are different ways of adding videos. Now about the time to find out. Yes, again, add the slide, activities, time to find. I don't remember. We can move the time here. And it will be my homework to check if we can like move like other settings as as the point. or the music. Mm -mm. I don't think so. Maybe I will recommend like send a message to Nearpod with this idea of moving on the settings or let the teachers to to set the the points and the music from time to time. What are are there uh, other doubts, Ken? So lots of people talking about embedding different things like embedding Edpuzzle into Nearpod or embedding Flipgrid and in general, it looks like you can embed pretty well anything because you can embed a web resource, right? Right. Okay. Let me give me one minute to check the to get copy the link of my video. Sure. How to setting the um, Nearpod lesson, and I'm going to embed it in the lesson. Thanks for the participation. So if anyone's got some other thoughts, now is probably a good time to queue up some questions for Monica. Lisa's got her fingers out. Here she goes. She's typing a question. It's part of why I like teaching online. I, if the students have the cameras on, I can see what they're thinking, kind of. And I saw that Eugenia found our Flip Learning Network Facebook group. I just approved you. Multitasking for the win. I'll share that while I'm at it. So Flip Learning Network's visible on Facebook and Twitter. I think Instagram, I'm not sure. I very rarely log into Instagram just to post photos of food and my dog. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, we're much more active on Twitter, mm -hmm. but over the last couple of years, we've been more active on Facebook. And the Flip Learning Network is about all of you. So don't wait for us to do stuff. Jump in and be active. It's a network, not an organization. As Monica looks for her, you, I believe YouTube video just made a professional Facebook page. Hey. So kind of, yeah, um, yeah. I, I resisted a lot of Facebook for a lot of reasons, for political reasons. But okay, I have now the link. I'm going to place yeah. in the chat and I'm uh, additionally I'm going to show in the screen how to add this video. Okay. 
So Michelle's got a question about saying you need a gold subscription to do self-paced. Are you sure they can do this at home individually on the free account? Making sure I'm unmuted. Yeah, okay. Monica did share the YouTube link there in the chat. Uh, again, sorry. So um, it says that you need a gold subscription to do self-paced. Are you sure they can do this at home individually on the free account? That from Michelle. Oh, okay. Let me see. Will be my mistake. Let me check the price version. So often these things change. I used to share a lot of tools and then they changed their pricing models. And people were like complained about my slides from five years ago saying something <laughs> like, well, things change. But I've been caught off guard sometimes in a talk with that as well. And often a lot of these companies, their free versions are kind of hidden because they're really trying to get us to pay to survive. Um, I know that's the case for You Can Book Me, which I use often and promote often. And it's not obvious that the free version works. Yeah, you're right. Um, sorry, let me share with you the screen. Regardless, free or yeah. not, it's still it's still valid to share options. Yeah, my apologies. Yeah, uh, here we can in the nearpod.com pricing um, all the basic features, and in the gold version advanced feature, the student pays. Uh, is is an advanced features. So, okay. Right. So. That that makes sense. That's fair. Yeah, that's it. Uh, and also, when uh, the features that I use was uh, to convert a slide to draw it. So mm -hmm. that's uh, also an advanced feature. Not everything is awesome. This is free. Just flip tech twenty twenty. I think Joy just laughed, and Lisa as well. Good job make Matt smile. <laughs> Thank you. And um, well, um, so let's have, I have my presentation open in, in Nearpod, the one that I um, used with you. I had the option of adding here a video. I'm going to paste this is my uh, videos link. I have to mark it and then say save it. This is one of the options that we have to add a video. Another one is in an airport. Mm -hmm. Adding a slide and using uploading the video, the file or the link. Nice. The also the good news are, is, uh, are that we can practice and practice add mm -hmm. content and add activities and nothing will break up. So the best way to know near put to know all the, the features that are available uh, for us is like adding activities. They, are, they, they can be like really interactive. The quizzes, the matching pairs and others let us to add not only tests, but also images. Images that are maybe like stored in our computer or uh, using Google. So my invitation will be like 
try to create a lesson by yourself, adding content, adding activities, uh, checking the near pods, uh, frequent, quest, frequent questions uh, to or uh, adding uh, checking the webinars and, and there are lots of videos uh, about uh, near pod. And as uh, I already said, feel free to contact me at my email or at my Twitter account to resolve more doubts. And in this moment, I don't know, Ken, if uh, there is a different... Any, any more questions? Um, I'm seeing some comments, not too many questions. I just linked again, Monica on Twitter, as well as the video she shared just recently about Nearpod. Um, any other thoughts or questions? If you wanna open up your mic, that's fine with me. Um, it's nice to have a personal touch. But if you want to send it to me in public chat or private chat, Matthew Moore um, heard the Jumanji or, not, or sorry, Beetlejuice, 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 and showed up. Mm -hmm. um, Monica, thanks, Matt. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt's thanking Monica for her presentation. We definitely appreciate the time and generosity of everybody here, including our presenters. It's it's really important. And thank you for that, Matt. Um, that link above will be, I believe, her YouTube channel as well. Um, I just closed the link. Yeah. Yep, that's Monica's YouTube channel. Ken? Yes. I just wanted to take just a minute to thank Monica so much for her presentation on Nearpod. I know people were interested in seeing this, and I think we have a great turnout in our participants. But so many others are viewing a lot of these presentations, whether they're participating in the chats or not. So we really want to thank our presenters for taking their time and being generous with their creativity. Additionally, I want to also make sure that we're thanking all of our participants uh, because we've had some really great turnout already at the presentations yesterday and this morning. And I apologize, my daughter's here in the background. It's lunchtime now. <laughs> but um, we also have a bunch of great things coming up the rest of the week, including Flip Class Chat tonight yep. at 7 p.m. Central, where we're really just talking all things Flip Tech. So uh, come sit with us. It'll be more of an open forum for yep. a variety of things rather than quite so uh, dedicated to the presenters at hand. So keep an eye on those schedules, folks. We've got a few more extra bonus items that are going to be coming out. But we want to thank both the presenters and our participants. Thank you, Ken. Thanks, Matt. And the schedule I just linked again in the chat for anyone's interested. Um, a whole bunch of things going on today. Um, I will. We recorded a session a month or so ago in conjunction with F, uh, FLGI Global and uh, Flip Learning Network. A couple of us were here. And uh, I was on that and Helene Marshall was on that. And we're doing a live viewing of a recorded thing, which I kind of find is strange that it's a live recorded thing. But we're doing that about six o'clock, the hour before the regular flip class chat. So that's six central, which is seven Eastern or 4 p.m. Pacific Coast or do the schedule math. Um, I should actually link that. Um, I'd have to go out and find it. Oh failing at this. I had it open. I just edited the page for that earlier today. If you check the Facebook channel for the Flip Learning Network, um, I just shared about that recently. Yeah, thanks, Joy. I'm the one who wrote the post and I can't find the link. <laughs> uh, but I definitely invite everyone to be a part of the Flip Learning Network. Um, like I said before, this is not an organization that's these people above that do things. The Flip Learning Network's about all of you. You are the Flip Learning Network. Uh, we don't have official membership, but those who participate, you're part of this network. And, and I think that's really important. And that's been my view in these four years as the chair of the board. I'm hoping someone will take over for me soon, hint, hint. Um, and if anyone wants to be more involved, get, get talking to us that are on the board and uh, we'd like to have more people participate and, and lead this network. Definitely, yeah. Very, very interesting and very good opportunity to, to learn more from ones to, to others. Thank you, thank you. Thank you much. so hey, much, Monica. For help us like, to create this community. Yep.
yeah. and I'm glad to have colleagues from the Tech de Monterey sharing. I was in two sessions from colleagues from the Tech de Monterey today, so it's it's nice to see my colleagues sharing as well. <laughs> Yay! I'll make sure our bosses know about it. I'll, <laughs> I'll feed it up the chain all the way up to Salvador and David. <laughs> de Monterrey. <laughs> Muy bien. Thanks, Joy. Gracias, gracias. Everyone have an excellent day. And uh, in about 10 minutes, Durley will be continuing with her presentation. She just tried to upload a video that a student shared that I was going to try to share with you here. Share the... I believe it's processing. Yeah, it's not ready yet. So Durley, you might want to share that with um, Monica on Twitter. Um, you're both on Twitter, I know. So. You, yeah. can, you can share that later. We're, we're there. Trying to do it on Twitter. All right. And when he says, congratulations, you did an amazing work using Nearpod is like a really interesting tool. Uh, and more in this time, it's like um, giving those that touch of interaction between students being far away, it's quite interesting. Lovely. Thank Thanks, you. Darlie. Thank you very much, Darlie. Let's send this survey. I think we saw about 25 people. I was trying to keep an eye on the total number doing my little survey for Matt so we can count how many were successful in this awesome thing that Matt put together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I, I, I can check the, the report later and, and give you the Yeah, report. I think it was about 25. We're fine. It's, it's more or less. We're not, we're not counting attendance or numbers or, I think there's a side bet between Matt and Andrew Swan about how many we're going to have. So <laughs> Andrew wants a bigger number. Wonderful digital badges from Joy. Uh, can you share the slide, said uh, Cynthia. <laughs> Andrew will have cardboard cutouts on standby for his session. Hey, he'll be joining from five computers. I could do that, but I won't. All right. Well, thanks again, um, Monica. I'm gonna stop the recording now. Before